Today we're going to look at the PWM induction motor drive and there's a couple of good features come out here. We're producing a variable frequency by chopping the DC uh, supply that's created from the three phase mains with capacitors. Uh, so we're going to look at the motor waveforms and we should uh, see and hear some interesting things going on. This is called PWM, pulse width modulation, and uh, we can produce a variable voltage and a variable frequency. Okay, here's an induction motor. Here's the in uh, induction motor drive, often called an inverter. We're going to measure the voltage on the motor across two windings using the differential probe. Uh, this keeps us safe and uh, uh, isolates the voltage. So don't do these measurements unless you have something like this to measure voltages. We're going to measure the currents in the motor, again using uh, an isolated uh, current probe, often called an LEM, uh, as, as described here. Uh, so we can measure the current, we can measure the voltage. So at the moment I just, I'm just showing the current on here. So let's bring the voltage up and we're ready to turn on. So the point of this is that we get the point of the inverted motor drive is that we can have variable speed uh, out of this machine. So we can turn it on and there we go we're running at a slow speed we can turn up the speed and it goes faster. And you may hear as we turn up the speed that it appears to be changing gear. And then we're in top speed and off we go. We can go to a very nice high speed here on the motor. So running very quickly there. A bit of vibration. Okay, let's bring that down again. And let's, we can look at the motor current. Uh, incidentally, we can see a nice uh, sine wave of blue current there. Perhaps I can slow that down a little bit. There we go. Just slow that down so it synchronizes with the scope. And we've got a nice uh, sine wave of current there. Notice that the voltage waveform is either plus, maybe zero, or minus. That's characteristic of pulse width modulation. And we'll look at that in a bit more detail. The important thing though, to firstly to notice, is that the motor itself is smoothing the current and taking the fundamental voltage out of that voltage waveform with lots of chopping going on. Uh, it does smooth the current with a ripple that you can see. Okay, let's examine that a bit more and let's listen to that gear changing as we slow down. Okay, we'll just about hold it there. We're going at a low speed, we're in a low gear. Quite noisy. Slow it down a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So you can see we now have a low frequency of current. We've got a low speed in the motor. Lots of chopping going on here. A great deal of uh, pulsing in the voltage. And you can see the ripple, a little ripple in the current. Now it's very important with this uh, type of scheme that we try and not have too much switching or too fast the switching because of the switching losses. So we try and keep a ratio between the output frequency seen in the current and the switching frequency, the chopping. And that's the gear changing that you can hear as we go up. So if I increase the speed a little, we're still in the same gear and it's all just getting sort of squeezed up a little bit. The, this frequency, the chopping is still the same frequency, but our fundamental has gone up. And then all of a sudden, we change to a different gear and the chopping, interestingly, the chopping looks to be about the same frequency. And that's part of our objective, is to keep the chopping the same frequency or similar frequency as we increase the output frequency. And keeping them in step gives us that gear that we can sort of hear, or we can hear very clearly. So that's the basic principle of PWM and the principle of gear changing. If we go up in speed now, go back up, we can start to see something else interesting happening. 
So we just changed another gear. Notice that the chopping still appears to be about the same sort of uh, frequency, which is right. The current waveform now is much faster and in fact does appear to have more ripple in it. Well, it probably hasn't got a lot more ripple in it, but the, the uh, induction motor has changed its characteristics a little bit as we speed up and we are seeing a bit more ripple in the current. But notice that this frequency is much higher than it was. Now something else interesting is happening. We'll try and get that stationary. Oh. Now we can see something very interesting happening here in that we're losing a lot of pulses, particularly in the middle of the waveform there. And in fact, we see, appear to have very few pulses there. And in fact, the ripple frequency has gone up a lot. So we've changed the gear again, but this time we're also dropping pulses. We've decided we don't actually need to have uh, so much pulses in there. We want more volts out of the inverter at the higher speed for the motor. Just and as we increase the speed, there we go, we've dropped nearly all the pulses are dropped now. Let's see if we can get that to a stable position. Okay, there we go. It's gone nice and quiet now as the motor reaches a better speed and loses some resonances. So we've dropped all the pulses through there. We just have a little bit of chopping here. It's a three-phase system, so there's still a bit of chopping apparent in the currents. Uh, and the current has still got a basic sinusoidal form. And we can keep going up. See if we lose all the pulses altogether. No, we're not going to lose all the pulses, it seems. That seems to be the maximum modulation. We're just going into what I think is called uh, field weakening for the induction motor. So let's just take it down and listen to that nice gear changing again. Those of you who ever take a train may have heard this sort of thing on the, on the train. So there's the pulses dropping. Pulses coming back in, a definite gear change. Much more noisy now those pulses have come back. Lots more pulses coming in. There we go, very familiar sound to those people who take the train between Cambridge and London. And that switching frequency is staying about the same. Let's just change the time base. The oscilloscope now struggles to catch it, a very low frequency there, and we can get a very low speed. There we go, very low speed, stands still there. And of course we can change direction with no problem at all, we we'll simply go in the other direction. There we go, up to speed very nicely. There we go, so that's pulse width modulation in an induction motor drive with gear changing.